In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the peak hold feature uh, that is found on a number of different indicators. In this particular video, we have the 1280 here, so you can see how that's set up and, and what it will do. So I currently have a 10,000 pound by one pound scale. Uh, no other settings are set up on this. We've got a computer set up on the side to simulate our printer where the information would be sent after performing the measurement. The peak hold has four different settings. By default, it's off. Then you have an automatic setting, which will, after every single return to zero, will automatically send the information out of your designated port, whether that be a printer or a computer in this example, and it will automatically clear and reset the peak hold. You have a normal parameter, which then requires that you either press the print button to capture the peak hold and reset things, or the zero button would also clear that. And that will only take a positive value for a peak hold. The other parameter is a bi-directional, which will allow you to capture a peak if it happens to be at a value below zero. And it's important to recognize that that peak is determined based on the absolute value distance from zero. Uh, so you might have, obviously, you know, 5,000 pounds positive is a higher value uh, than 6,000 pounds negative, but the peak hold will register the negative 6,000 because it's the absolute value that is used in that case. So let's go in and we'll set up the peak hold for uh, a couple of these options and see how this works. So we'll just go into the menu here, go into configuration, we'll go under scales, and the peak hold feature is going to be found under the setup menu, so I'm going to go to setup and then right down here towards the bottom we see peak hold is currently off. So we'll go ahead and set this for automatic on our first run here. We'll select done and we'll save and exit. And so again with the automatic setting we're expecting that as soon as we return to zero and, and technically it's within 10 divisions of zero. Uh, so I'm going to return to zero and I'm going to see over on the computer uh, that that information will automatically be sent out there as if it were a printer out there, as if somebody hit that print button. So right now we're at zero. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little weight using the simulator. You see we're over 3,000 pounds here. I might come back down to half of that, and then I might go up a little bit further. So as long as I don't return to zero, it's going to continue to grab information. And you see down here it's showing that the peak has been acquired. Right now that peak is 5,000 pounds. And even if I continue to make weighments that are less than that, as soon as I go back down to zero, it's sent over to the computer there as 5,000 pounds because that was the highest value that it recorded in that particular session. And you also see that the peak acquired message has now disappeared. And then it rearms it for the next one. So if I just go this far this time and come back down to zero, now that value is going to automatically be sent out there. Well, let's compare this with the normal setting. So if I go back into the menu here, under configuration, go under scales, and again under setup, we're going to change our parameter here to normal, we'll select done, and then save and exit. And now this time, uh, we're looking to press that print button in order to uh, then clear that peak hold uh, for that particular turn. So in this case, it shows me the peak has been acquired. I might come back down to zero. But notice we don't have anything automatically sent over there. So I, I've removed whatever it is I weighed on the scale, and now I've got a different object. And maybe this time uh, I go up to 5,000, and I take that off of there, and maybe I weigh a, a third and a fourth and a fifth product, uh, however many is needed, and maybe the most 
uh, heavy one was this weight. We'll come back down to zero, and I can go ahead and press that print button this time, and it shows that highest value that was captured in the moment. Finally, let's take a look at the bidirectional. Go back into configuration. We'll go to our scale menu and set up. And we'll hit bidirectional there and done and save and exit. And in this particular setting, uh, it should allow us to capture negative values as well. So we'll just take a look at how that works. So in this case, I might take a Weymant. If I come back down to zero, currently that's the peak. But if I come down to negative value here, I see that we've got a matching set. Let's see how that plays out. We'll hit print. So in this case, it gave the positive value over there because the positive is larger even though the negative value showed the same. Now in, in the case of the tie, it goes to the positive value. If we capture the negative value and we capture some other value to the positive, maybe a couple different values even to the positive side. Here we got 543. There's 348, and then we bring it back down to zero. When we go ahead and hit that print button, it should capture that lowest value, and it does, negative 1,666 pounds. So even though we had several weighments that technically have a higher weight value, uh, it's grabbing that absolute value and using that as the peak. And that's an example of how we might use peak hold using the 1280.